On this channel, I already dove deep into what makes the Lumix S5 Mark II a great cinematography camera, video camera, but I really bought this camera for its hybrid capabilities to be able to do both photo and video. And today I'm gonna to be showing you guys a little look into that and give you my first impressions on what it's like actually using it. I'm gonna be talking about high ISO performance, color science and autofocus. And one of those things are underrated in my opinion. But here you go, this is me, some behind the scene footage of the photo shoot at the park with some models. And you'll be able to see edited versions of the photos I take real time. Um, can I have your help like scare the birds maybe a little bit? Scare them? Like how? <laughs> So it just makes some noise. How did you do that? But you can't do that, so just clap. So, yep. I think mm -hmm. I'm gonna have you guys like gather them a bit, and then oh, okay. she's gonna scare the birds. And then as they're scaring, like I'm gonna take some photos of like them surrounding you guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So how do we uh, do? We just uh, face away from the camera. So, um. So can get the design, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be good. Okay, cool. Uh, we have more bread? I'll have you have the more <laughs> forward and then you'll be more of the main subject to get your back graphic. Cool. Okay. That's good. Okay, I'll have oh, you still over there, and then I'll count down. Three, two, one, action. If I can have you scare the birds in this direction. Yeah. Sorry. Three, two, one, action. <laughs> How do you that loud sound? Yeah, um, just clap because I do. I can do it pretty loud, and then maybe on the side now. They know what's up. I want the these ducks in front of you. Want this? Hello? Oh yeah. Here you go. <laughs> Don't be scared. Yeah, yeah, just give it my, my, my. Hey, oh, uh, they won't attack you. Um, can I have your help adjusting your shirt again? Thank you. Sick. Yes, thank you. Okay, cool. Um, I think I'm gonna have her scare them one more time. And then, yeah, we'll move on. This way, and then can you clap? All right. Three, two, one, action. I like it. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> That's good. Cool. Can I have your I think left hand, come forward, maybe just the rest thing on your leg. And then, yeah, that was good. You're a lot of help, thank you. <laughs> I've done photography filming before. So cool. Like this stuff, but like, very finicky. <laughs> All the photos you just saw were edited by me in Lightroom. And to get these photos, I was using the natural picture profile in the Lumix camera with reduced saturation, highlights, and upped shadows, reduced 
sharpening and no noise reduction added. That is like the overall settings I use to get these photos and it provided a great starting point for me to make the adjustments I wanted. And the color out of this sensor is really pleasing. I actually really like it. I think that it competes with Canon's color science. If you spend any time within the photo or video scene, you are bound to hear the praise that Canon gets for its color science. But I think Panasonic doesn't get the same amount of praise even though it's within the same realm. At least very like, you know, it definitely competes against it. This is at least when we're talking about photos, but when we're talking about like the log footage out of Canon versus the log footage out of Lumix, then there are some definitely significant differences, but that's for video. I still like the color science for video, but for photo, I think they're on par with each other. On par, I really don't know if I actually use that right. What does that even mean? What you do hear about Panasonic cameras though, are the backlash about its autofocus. Let's talk about that. I actually haven't ran into any issues during this photo shoot with the autofocus, even at low light settings and even with um, the subject being backlit with the sunset, the camera was still able to snap into focus just as easily. I will say that I was using the native 20 to 60 kit lens and autofocus really depends on the native glass that you're using. So if you're planning to slap a Sigma lens on this, any third party lenses like that, then you're gonna see a reduced performance in autofocus. I wish that the, this kit lens was faster, but you know, it's a kit lens, what do you expect? But I'm actually happy that I got the job done. Moving on, I've heard in other reviews that the image out of the sensor is too sharp for some people. For me, I actually think it's good. I reduced some of the sharpening in the picture profile and yeah, it's good. I actually ended up adding back more sharpness in Lightroom. So no problem there. And something that caught my eye was that I actually like the grain or the noise in the higher ISO performance. I actually stumbled on this by accident. During these photos, I had my ND filter on and I didn't realize. And so I just cranked up the ISO without even thinking about it. I know, shame on me. But, but yeah, without adding any noise reduction or any of my own grain into the image, I'm actually pleased with how the image looks. For those of you that don't care about grain, um, you'll be happy to know that, yes, at ISO 100, there, it's clean. There's nothing much there. It's clean shadows and a good amount of detail everywhere. And just based off of that little accident, just nope that whenever you try to lift the shadows or are shooting at 3200 ISO, you're gonna get some noise. I don't know guys what you think, but for me, the more I just keep learning about trying to get what a good image quality is out of my camera, the more I kind of embrace the artistic choice of grain is and like where film emulation should come into role when it's telling a story. And so I like grain. I don't think everything needs to be clean. That's just a little two cents for you right there. And a couple things at the end of this video I just wanna wrap up with is that this is my first full frame camera. And I just wanna say I did not know how much like field of view I was missing when shooting with an APS-C sensor. My like, like my understanding of a wide focal length was like kinda broken in a way when shooting in full frame versus APS-C. Then last thing, um, the battery life on this thing did great. I shot around like 500 photos that day. Um, I still had a lot in the battery. I don't know exact percentage, but it was still up there. But that is it. So that's all I have for my first impressions on the Lumix S5 Mark II for fashion photography. If you're curious about the S5 II and other scenarios, please consider checking out the channel. I hope to see you in the next one. God bless.